had a situation where we were insourcing all of our technology back from an outsourced arrangement uh, to Continuum. And the challenge was we had four different SANs we had from four different vendors. So we had a hodgepodge of storage uh, technology. And the direction was we had to look forward five, six, seven years and decide what we we're going to do enterprise wide. So the solution had to be able to A, be flexible, B, be able to be heterogeneous and economically feasible in terms of healthcare because healthcare never has any dollars. Uh, not surprisingly, we ended up with a data core solution management overhead of uh, whatever hardware platform we chose, again being heterogeneous, so there was the value. So as we aged out or contracts came to term on um, the different various SANs, we were able to migrate those underneath a data core head and manage those so we could reutilize the investment, not waste it. Uh, make a long story short, what we did was take that initial investment and then grow that to really be a strategic disaster recovery or high availability um, environment. Um, I think now they call geo clusters or metro clusters. Right. Um, we were doing this before they had the term. So, and we were doing it on data core. So what we ended up doing was synchronously replicating from our main data um, site in the, in the data center here in Secaucus to two different uh, locations, one at the basement of the Roosevelt Hospital, one at the basement of the Beth Israel Hospital, so that we had secondary mirrors everywhere. And then we also, in using the data core software, had a basically a, a tertiary net in the CDP solution so that we were backing it up to CDP and then off the tape after that, giving us four different slices of data that we, uh, we could screw up three times and still be okay, because um, humans fail. We haven't had that yet, but uh, it's nice to know that you have it in case you have to roll back. The first is you have to retrofit what you have and move to, to current. So with just-in-time virtualization, we're able to do that in terms of budgeting. So even if you think you, you are going to accurately budget next year's capital expenditures, you're going to be off by a certain percentage. With virtualization or heterogeneous virtualization, the way Datacore does it, we can do just-in-time uh, allocation where we don't have to be 100% accurate in terms of how much a PAC system will need or how much an EMR will grow. The first couple of years, that's kind of hard to, to determine because you don't have good statistics on how much you grow. Is it 3%? Is it 5%? And if you're off, then you have to go ahead and ask for more capital. But net-net, if you just take an aggregate of all your storage, it's easier to just cross-allocate um, just in time. So if we have a reservoir of disk, just raw disk, we can just provision it in time when an application grows at a different rate because there'll be a change in business uh, protocols or they'll change out, for instance, a 16 slice uh, CAT scan or an EMR or an MI machine goes to 32, it goes to 64, they become denser images. So what used to take, you know, a one megabyte now takes three megabytes and then each study thereafter is going to grow uh, proportionally three times as large, three times as fast. So having the ability to just swap disk as you need it, take advantage of price point as they break in the, in the market saves you money, so we save money that way. Once you get that under control, then we lower the cost each capital year of how much we have to spend on storage because we're again choosing the aggregate, so we don't have to uh, budget system by system how much it's going to grow. We basically just say this institution will need X number of dollars this year, and then if different applications grow at different rates, or we upgrade certain systems, that becomes a real complicated equation to come up with an exact number of bytes that you're going to grow in a particular year. We don't have to get down into that complicated math. We basically just can proportion disk as we need it and then save the money that way. What we're able to do is separate all of the applications, all the different uh, electronic medical record systems uh, from their storage solutions. So historically, typically, what a, a hospital would do is, is take the configuration from an EMR vendor and put it in untouched. We force now the EMR vendors to meet our storage standards. What that does for us is allows us to synchronize or synchronously replicate the data without the ability of the EMR being able to do it. So even if the EMR can't do it, we have two copies of the data and then we also on the data core uh, solution have a CDP solution and then take it to tape. But we can do all these things even if the EMR vendor can't. So that allows us basically to choose an EMR strictly on its clinical capabilities. So if in the ED a system has 
a lot more workflow uh, compatibility with how we, we see our ED f working, we can make the choice of that irregardless of the fact that the deep technology or the storage technology may not be current or up to snuff. We'll take care of that, separate that decision from the clinical decision, and allows us that flexibility